So I recently came across this post on Reddit and the title stated, I regret getting solar and I'm stuck with it. Which if you ever go on social media, this is nothing new. Stories like this pop up from time to time and can really make you wonder, what the heck is going on? Is solar really a scam or is this just a misunderstanding? And after reading through this story, I really don't blame him for feeling the way he does and being honest. I'd probably feel ripped off too. This guy got crushed on just about every angle. The short version of the story is he rushed into the decision to purchase solar panels for his home. And on the surface, it seemed like a great idea. Lower utility bill, clean energy, all of that. But he didn't do his proper due diligence. He grossly overpaid for the system he got and he put his trust into a consultant who misled him. And that's discouraging to see. What's even more disappointing is like I had mentioned, this is not an isolated incident and I'm so tired of it. It's really not uncommon that solar panels get associated with being a scam, a ripoff, or a bad idea in general. To me, I know solar is a great option when it's done right, but it's the lack of transparency, general misinformation, and missed expectations that can make things ugly. Sometimes it's even just the blind leading the blind when you have a sales rep who just doesn't know any better. So after reading through this post, I thought to myself, knowing what I know, how can homeowners ensure they're getting the right set of expectations when going solar? So let's cover six things that you just can't miss when you're looking at solar for your home. And stick around for number six because I did save the most important for last. So the first thing that we gotta get right is proper system size. The most common question I get asked by everyone I meet with is how many solar panels do I need? And my answer is always the answer everybody hates the most. It depends. When it comes to the right size system, my philosophy is that there is no wrong size system within reason, of course, and let me explain why. Whether you install one solar panel or 50 solar panels on your roof, if that system is functioning as it should, there will be some benefit. Even the tiniest of solar systems save you money, you just may not like the results based on your perceived expectations. What you want to be sure of is that you aren't really getting an undersized system with the misrepresentation of it performing like a properly sized or even oversized system. Just because you have solar on your roof doesn't mean you'll never have an electric bill again. This isn't some magical technology that will cover all of your power needs 24 seven. But to keep it simple, here's how you can protect yourself. Make sure you provide your consultant or your installer with an actual utility bill or energy report to review, not an average bill, not an annual bill, not a ballpark, your actual 12 months worth of kilowatt hours consumed. This way they know your annual energy consumption broken down month to month in kilowatt hours and they are not operating off of a guess. It would also be wise that you know this information as well so you can be sure that they added it all up correctly. So let's say you use 10,000 kilowatt hours a year. Now when designing a system, your proposal is going to include some kind of percent offset such as 80%, 100% or or 120%. These are just general examples of an undersized, right-sized, or oversized system. And all three of these options have their merit based on your goals, your utility provider's rate structure, and your overall budget. This percent offset represents the annual solar generation in kilowatt hours compared against your annual consumption also in kilowatt hours. Be mindful that this offset is not the same as savings, so don't automatically assume that a 100% offset will also create a 100% utility bill reduction. Ultimately, you need a system that is designed to be capable of producing your desired outcome, which for most is usually max savings and or a mostly eliminated utility bill. So ask your installer these two questions. One, why do you recommend this system size? And two, what can I expect my post solar utility bill to be with this system? This way, you can be sure that you and the installer are on the same page. But keep in mind that more solar panels might not always mean more savings, which takes us into our second point, battery systems. We talk about batteries a bunch here on the channel, so if you've watched before, you probably know the drill. In fact, you probably know more than your solar consultant. For those new to the channel, welcome. My name's Zach. If you end up enjoying this video, check out my others and hit the subscribe button button, I'd really appreciate that. Now, the main thing that you want to remember when it comes to battery systems is just to be sure that you don't fall into this false narrative that a battery is only good for power outages. It's very common for me to hear from homeowners that say they aren't interested in a battery only because they never get power outages. So they think that solar is all they need to maximize savings. I will still hear of solar companies that say batteries are way too expensive and the technology just isn't there to try and steer homeowners away from them. And sometimes this is due to a lack of training, knowledge, confidence, 
or just not being able to handle battery projects as an installer. But regardless of all of this, I'm not saying you need to get a battery. What I am saying is make sure you don't put your thinking in a box and completely close off the idea and then find out years later that you wish you added one from the very beginning. You might do your due diligence and feel like it is too expensive and the technology isn't there, but at least you explored the option. So if you're unsure, you can ask your installer either or both of these two questions. One, do you recommend a battery system based on my situation? And then two, could I see a proposal with and without a battery so I can compare the differences? I'm gonna link a video in the description below that I put together on three questions you need to answer before buying a Tesla Powerwall or any battery system for that matter. That video will be a great starting point for you. If you do get solar first and you wanna install a battery later, this is very doable. I mean, we install battery systems to previously installed solar setups all the time, so you don't have to do it all from day one. However, it may come with some limitations, restrictions, or even added costs. With this all being said, battery systems are still great for backup and outage protection, but they have primarily become the go-to options in many regions to help offer more value and savings. This is due to the fact that utilities are continuing to shift more towards time of use rate plans and reduce the amount they pay homeowners for their excess solar generation. Oftentimes in these situations, shifting your investment away from more energy generation, the solar panels, and into energy management, the battery, might make more sense overall for your savings, grid independence, and just the overall experience. Now, no matter if you get a solar and battery system or just solar panels, a big part of grid tied solar is your utility company, which takes us into point number three. Understanding how your utility works, at the very least on a fundamental level. The way your utility works is single-handedly the biggest variable that determines the proper system setup. Figure out how much they currently charge per kilowatt hour and get a good gauge on how much you pay throughout the year in total. And if you were to go solar, find out what your post-solar rate structure would be. See if there are any time of use rate options, solar friendly plans in general, and most importantly, what do they credit you per kilowatt hour for your excess solar generation? I want to know if they pay me a full one-to-one -one value or a measly four cents per kilowatt hour like my utility and like what we see with a lot of utilities in California, Arizona, Texas, Hawaii, and a lot of these states that are solar mature. Knowing this is so overlooked because most of the time when you're going solar, there might be this misunderstanding that you're ditching the utility company and your solar is going to cover everything. And like we saw with that Reddit post, that isn't always the case. Here are two questions you need to ask. These are not optional. One, does my utility offer one-to-one -one net metering or do they buy my energy back at a reduced wholesale value? If so, how much is that value? And then two, are there any time of use plans or rate plans in general that'd be good for me to take advantage of with solar and or a battery? This will usually be some sort of time-based rate plan that you can leverage to save even more money. Now, if you'd like my assistance here in figuring out what kind of setup and strategy will make the most sense for you, Book a call with me. You can find the link at the top of the description below. It's free, takes just 15 minutes, and there's absolutely zero pressure or obligation to move forward. Now for point number four, let's talk about the federal tax credit. Now, homeowners and solar consultants alike misunderstand this tax credit as a tax rebate meaning it's just a check that shows up in the mail because you bought solar panels. And unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that, and here's what you need to know. The federal tax credit is 30% of your gross system cost. It's a dollar for dollar credit, not a write-off, a credit that reduces your federal tax liability, which is your federal tax bill that you owe for the year. And when it comes to this credit, the most important two things to remember are this. One, your solar consultant or installer is not a tax professional. If you do not know how this credit can benefit you, Ask a tax professional, not your solar installer. And number two, this tax credit is non-refundable, meaning it is not a rebate check or cash that just shows up in your mailbox after going solar. You must have tax liability to take advantage of this credit. The easiest way to understand how this credit works is it's essentially a gift card to the IRS that is in the amount of 30% of your system cost. You can use this gift card in as many visits as needed, assuming the tax credit still exists, to allow the amount to span multiple tax years. So if you purchased a $30,000 solar system, 30% of that is $9,000, so you would have $9,000 in federal credit or a gift card to use and reduce reducing your future tax liability. Now, the good news is most all income earners have federal tax liability of some kind, but it's all case by case since tax situations are highly personal. But even for those of you who think you don't pay taxes because you get a refund at the end of the year, I'm telling you, you probably pay a good amount in taxes. So knowing how this tax credit will benefit you is very important when it comes
comes to having the correct expectations. 30% is no small number and not knowing how it can benefit you is a terrible strategy and a recipe for a bad experience. So like I said, if you're not sure, ask a tax professional for their input on how a solar tax credit could benefit you. When it comes to the money side of solar, the tax credit is a key part of the total system economics, but so is how you actually purchase or don't purchase the system. So let me explain point number five. There are two primary ways to fund a solar project and they both have their pros and cons. First, you have an outright cash purchase, just like anything in life that you buy with money up front, you pay a solar installer the price, they install the system, and you claim your tax credits and incentives on the back end. The main benefit here is you own the system from day one, you avoid paying interest, and you get the quickest payback period. Now, the second way is you have some sort of payment plan, which is the most popular way homeowners go solar today, since it's almost always offered with zero down, but this is also where things can get messy if you don't ask the right questions. Within this payment plan strategy, you can either finance the system where you own it but are making monthly payments on it, similar to a mortgage, or you can offer a TPO plan, which stands for third party owned, which includes plans like a lease or a PPA, power purchase agreement. We're covering a lot of acronyms today and honestly, this entire topic could be a video on its own, so I'll keep it simple. If you are doing a payment plan of any kind, the very first question that you need to ask is, is this a loan? a lease, or a power purchase agreement. What we want to identify here is simple. Who owns the system, you or a third party? If the plan is a loan, here's the number one thing you need to make sure of. Understand your interest rates. Some lenders offer a wide range of interest rates based on the customer situation. Some plans have artificially lowered interest rates with built-in fees within that loan. These fees essentially work like prepaid interest to buy that rate down. These plans can be good for those that want the lowest total monthly payment. Some plans have interest rates that are higher and have significant less fees. These will ultimately get you right at that same as cash price. These plans are usually best for those who may pay the system off early, like the idea of outright ownership, but may not have all the cash on day one. Now, one isn't right and one isn't wrong. They both have their use case, but a good question you can ask here is, can I see a proposal with a financing option that offers the lowest dealer fee? Basically, as a consumer, you just want to see that cash price and the financing options associated with that price tag. That way, everything is transparent to you. The main benefit with financing is it gives you all the benefits of ownership, including the tax credit, but allows you to get into it with zero money down and a payment usually around or less than what you were paying the utility. Now, when it comes to these TPO, third-party owned plans, aka leasing and PPAs, since you don't own the system with these, the value of your tax credit is taken by the company funding your project, and in return, they're gonna give you a discounted cost on your monthly rate. So if you have no tax liability and can't take advantage of a tax credit, then opting for a TPO product might be a value to you. Either way, the main question you will wanna ask on your TPO plan is, does this monthly payment have any annual escalator? If yes, can you show me how much it would cost per month if it was a fixed rate for the entire term? The term lengths are usually 25 years. Most of these solar TPO plants have the option of including some sort of annual escalator, so make sure you know if your plan has one as well. The horror story we want to avoid is thinking this payment will never change for 25 years, when in reality it goes up 2 or 3% per year, and you had no idea because your consultant didn't explain it properly. The main benefit of a TPO plan is the same as financing, just minus the ownership part. Most people I talk with wanna own their system, while others don't care at all and want the system that shows the most savings. So when in doubt, just get a proposal for both. Regardless, in any case, loan, cash, lease, PPA, read the agreement before signing. Ensure all of this information is 100% clear, 100% transparent, in black and white before signing. If you guys are getting any value from this video so far, I have a huge favor to ask. Drop me a like on the video, that way YouTube knows to push this video out to more people People just like you. So this brings us to our sixth and final point, and that's selecting the right solar consultant and solar installer. And usually this is a package deal. Good consultants want to be with good installers and good installers want good consultants representing their brand. Unfortunately, no matter what, you're going to have to work with a sales rep or a solar consultant, but here's the easiest way to clear the field. Ask yourself, do I feel like this consultant is trying to sell me or educate me? You absolutely want to work with somebody who is in the business of educating and not selling. Now, why is this the most important thing of all is because a really good consultant and installer combination is not only going to address the previous five concerns we've already covered, but even more things that are critical to the entire process. I'm telling you, in the 10 years I've been doing this, the good consultants and installers in the industry will properly size and outfit your system with different equipment options. They will know your utility provider and help guide you here. 
and they'll explain the tax credit and solar financing options clearly. Now, how do you find these people? Well, if you're watching this video, that means you're probably doing your homework and you're off to a good start. Do your research, check local reviews, and ask others who have already gone solar if they're happy with it and who they used, specifically the company, and the exact sales rep. So when looking at solar, this process doesn't always have to be filled with landmines. It really is a fantastic product when it's done the right way from step one. Hopefully these tips and tricks can make your solar journey that much easier. If you want me to help in any way, book that call with me using the link below and I'm happy to assist. Picking the right solar panel can be overwhelming too. So check out this video here on the screen where I rank my top solar panels going into 2025. Thanks for watching and I'll talk with you guys next time.